Hey everybody, welcome to another GG WoW video. We are today going to be ranking the raid bosses from Avarice the Shadowed Crucible using my personal favorite, the tier list format. I'm of course Stratnos, joined by JPC, OneZ, and Krista. And we Hello. will be... Hello indeed. We'll be starting off with uh, Kazara the Hellforged. First boss of the raid. I thought this one was... I thought it was a pretty cool first boss. I don't know what you guys think about this one, but... I actually, I quite enjoyed this one, and have I've wiped to it on farm. Actually, I, I don't know if that's happened to any of you guys yet. I get the wipe on it, but yeah, I mean, I think it's everything you can ask from like a first boss, right? I think it's like perfectly like mechanically designed for a first boss. I'm not sure if there's like anything more you'd want out of it. And then yeah, I mean, like I had a, like a I had a decently long fight time if I remember correctly. It was like maybe like five minutes or something. So I don't know. I thought it was a pretty good first boss myself. I thought it was pretty good. It's a bit strange how it was more difficult than like, you know, assaults and I'd like to say amalgamation, but design wise, I really liked it a lot. I thought it was a great boss. I, I okay. prefer it to uh Teragru and um Oh Vigil Guardian. Guardian. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Guardian much better, was much awful. better than those. So. Yeah, I hate a Guardian. Yeah. Yeah, dude, Guardian Heroic as well. We're, we're, this is the Mythic uh, list here, so we'll be talking about the Mythic versions of these bosses for the most part, although uh, we'll mention if there's anything important on any of the lower difficulties to talk about as well. But yeah, dude, I actually, I think that it's kind of nice as well when the first boss is a little bit harder than the next two because it means that if you are, like, later in the season when we start pugging this, if you can kill Kazara, you're going to be able to kill Assault and probably it's a Chamber more and get for the your pugs, ult, like, right? Okay, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas you, you remember uh, Battle of the Zarlor, you'd kill Champions Light and then you couldn't kill Grong and it was, <laughs> you were just... Uh... And I feel like that's also really nice for pugs because you don't get locked, right? Like that's yeah. the thing about like a mythic lockout is yeah, just for that one lockout. So if you can get past the first boss, which is harder than the next two or one that you want for your vault, then yeah, I think it's really good. All right, so on our list here, how, how are we feeling here? I, I kind of feel like sort of gravitating somewhere around the A range. Yeah, I would say high yeah. A maybe. For a first boss, yeah. I definitely think high A. I put it out like an A. All right, up next is Zakali Assault, which is one of the bosses that uh, got widely panned on PTR. I actually am kind of a Zakali Assault enjoyer, though. I don't know. I, I like when we're walking up here. I'm looking forward to doing this fight. It's it's chill. Yeah, I mean, yeah. This is this is the fight where you open up YouTube and you start playing payphone, right? Like everyone's kind of just like chilling. The healers are throwing rocks. Like everyone's kind of just like doing their own thing. The healers I feel are like... throwing rocks. That's never happened in my guild. <laughs> Wait, yeah, really? ours, wait, who, ours neither. Wait, wait, wait where, where do you guys... Uh, where, they who make, throws they make, Nobody uh, throws the rocks. Take the rock from melee and run it 15 yards out of range. And they, they make throw melee it. throw the rocks? <laughs> well, no. But oh, okay. if we don't pick it up, nobody will. So oh, Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're like, oh yeah, the healer's doing the rocks, and that's me. And I'm like, no, this is terrible. And I'm a paladin, so it's the melee healer. It's... Yeah, Ooh. well... I, I honestly do like the fight. I think it had a slightly little bit more potential to be a pretty good fight. Like, I'm not sure what exactly you would do in, like, in terms of like maybe add spawn faster or maybe more phoenixes. I don't know. I don't know what it would be, but I think it did have potential to be a pretty good fight. I think it does think... lose some points for the mythic mechanic being like nothing that was being there, but not actually doing anything at all. Yeah, the phoenixes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I don't know. I do struggle to like it. And the mythic mechanic with the phoenix there was like two days where some raid groups, it wouldn't spawn at all. You got no wins. You got no phoenixes. Like that was my guild. And it's like kind of clearly like a buggy mess. I also have a bias against kind of like assault fights. So I'm, I'll probably like it the least out of anyone here, I think. All right, let's, uh, let's get some votes. What tier do you guys want to place? Uh, Zakali Salt James, where, where, you, where would you want to put this? I was going to put it in C tier. That's okay. what I was going to say. I'm thinking yeah. C. All right. Krista, I'd say D, but D. All right. Well, I would go. I would go. I actually w would kind of want to put it higher than C personally. So let's Don't let's call it. it a C. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I want to hear Dude, what you're going to say though. Look, the, you know, if they're going to put an ad fight in the raid, putting it nice and early, having it not scale yeah, in some super jerk way, where if you outgear it, you're just sitting there waiting, and you need a gong mm -hmm. or something to speed I it agree. up. Like yeah. you've got a nice actual boss that you can dump damage into as well. You can, you know. The, it, I, I agree. I, I think I think it was a pretty fun fight. I think this is like, you know, if there's an ad fight every tier that's like this, I'm I'm I don't have a problem. But if they like, yeah, maybe it was strong enough. It could have been later in the tier and had some more mechanics or something. But if they mess it up and it's later in the tier, it's so bad. Mm -hmm. Stone Legion generals. 
So what? So what? You think it'd be like an A tier for like? A we'll call it C. Boss? Call it C. I mean, we got we got two <laughs> okay. votes for C, one below, and one above. It sounds like a C okay, on okay. our. Uh... Off to amalgamation chambers. Yeah, amalgamation chamber. I actually thought the mechanics on this fight, like the the aesthetics and the reading the dungeon journal of this, where it's like, oh, there's the shadow ability and then the flame ability, and then P two. It's like it combines them both. I thought this fight was uh was really like elegant. See, I have the opposite opinion. I absolutely hated this fight. And I don't know if it's the case of the guild that you're in or the strat that you use or whatever. But I remember when we fought this boss, I think it gained enough shield to ha like we effectively did the boss twice. That's how oh, many yeah. orbs it ate. And uh Oh, I think you're thinking of uh Forgotten Experiments. We're we're talking about amalgamation oh, yeah. the Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, you, dude, you know, I always get those two confused because the bosses, <laughs> they sit in these chambers of liquid. I thought there was something I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. No, this is a good boss. I actually like this boss. I think it's kind of fun. You're like on one side of the room, but you got to look and kind of be in touch with the mechanics on the other side so you don't just get like blasted by a flame wave coming across the room. And then this is like a nice second boss. Like I, I compare this to Eye of the Jailer, which is the same... Like, there's a lot of parallels, and I think this is just a strictly better version of Eye of the Jailer. Yeah, I think scaling up from this, um, from Kazara, is pretty good. I think it's definitely, like, a slight more of a challenge. And, yeah, what James said, you just need to be paying attention to the other side. You got to be looking at the stacks and, like, you know, what the strat is, you know, whether, like, everyone's going to be clearing or the tanks are going to be swapping or, you know, there's, like, definitely a lot of intervals or, um, not intervals, just a lot of ways that you can approach the start of the fight. And I think that's definitely really interesting. I think purely to listen to Range argue who wants to stand in the middle made it pretty fun as well. Just yeah, the cleave and the dots. But yeah, I agree. I think it's just sure, the, really the healers really must awesome. have loved the warlocks. Just like sitting there taking both stacks. Like, okay, yeah, oh, exactly. Like, that's a beacon target. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, I don't know. It's it's kind of sounding like another A perhaps from us then on the Amalgamation Chamber. I feel like yeah. maybe B, but B? we can okay. put it A if you guys are feeling it. Is this a second or a third boss? I think I mean, I it's, 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 it's the third hardest, but it's the second that you'd go to if you're just running left, which mm -hmm. like I, uh, I think for a second are. boss, this is like an A tier. But maybe if we're talking a third boss, might be B. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'd lean towards A on this one. We can put it A. All right, we'll uh, we'll call it A for now. So we've done for one now. tie break upwards. We can keep that track of that for later. Uh, Forgotten Experiments is up next now, James. You you expressed some disdain for this with the third boss shielding for seven hundred percent of its health and still being killable. Uh, the other issue with this one too is uh, there are a lot of specs with clear two target niches where they do very well. And if you played one of those specs, this might be a fun fight to play. But playing sub rogue on this boss was not my favorite because the second boss comes down and then you just put a little rupture on it and that's about it and yeah. uh yeah that felt kind of bad i mean it was fine other than that i guess i mean melee lost a lot of uptime which also isn't my favorite you know but it was okay i would give this one like a c but maybe you guys have some different opinions no, I feel like the ramping of the fight could have been more like extreme. Like it could have been more fun. Like I'm not sure if that would be maybe the bosses having more health, but the the fact that like it was just usually just fighting one of them at a time. Like as long as people are just DPSing correctly, it just seems kind of like I don't know, boring. Yeah. Also, the hardest part of the fight, like the fight, didn't increase in difficulty linearly as you went on. There was like a hard part yeah. of the fight for 30 seconds in the middle. And that was it. And then you had like two or three minutes of basically doing nothing. Yeah, like I kind of so, wish it just like kept ramping. You know what I mean? Like I thought yeah, it, yeah. it, it kept flatlining. All right. So C sounding uh, sounding pretty reasonable for this one. I thought it was a cool idea, like the mythic twist of them jumping down and joining each other, but ended up being a little bit weak. Yeah. I like C. I, I feel like it could have moved up if you had a little more like choice in how much you want to burn which boss, but it felt like ultimately everyone kind of landed on the same push times and yeah 
yeah because it was just i mean you like obviously you just like you got to hold your lust for when the first yeah, one drops not, yeah that was also another weird one like if you killed the first guy at like 126 or something i forget the exact time and you like skipped like four mechanics like, yeah because they they each of the second and third bosses are on their own spell queue that starts on pole so if you break them out right after they would have done one of their casts they don't do it for like a year yeah which and is, I, th uh, I thought that was so silly. Yeah, I mean, l literally, you know, stop DPS until one fifteen or whatever was. Yeah. What that might have even changed the so fight. Easy. That might have made the fight like ramp again. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I do think the fact that once you kill a boss, its mechanics kind of get removed, and they all have yeah. some element of permanence to them. But like, if you just nuke them down fast enough, you know, you exactly. can bleed dispel, and then you only have like a few of the other dispels out. Uh, so yeah, I, I think C's fair here, but I do think there were some cool ideas. You send the C. All right, Rashok is up next. Now, this is a fight that got a lot of critical acclaim on PTR. Onesie, let's start with you on this one. How did you feel this fight translated to live? Yeah, so I think this fight ended up being amazing on live compared to PTR. It just seems like they got all the numbers correct. And just the way that the fight was just mechanically designed, it just seemed like a really fun fight from beginning to end. All right, Krista, how about you? Are you a fan of Rashok as well? Oh man, when you get like a healer fight or lots of just overtime healing that's heavy, love it. Especially during the intermission, it makes me feel alive. Yeah. So zero complaints for me, except pesky waves maybe a little bit, but I think that's just me being bad. James, how about you? Uh, world first Rashok, if I'm not mistaken. Is that how, how, how you feel yeah. about this fight? Uh, I love this fight. This is like the type of fight that I really enjoy. Yeah. It's like what I like to call like a gamer boss. Like everyone's got to pull their own weight, dodge the waves. I think it's like one of those bosses where guilds that are going for cutting edge, but maybe not Hall of Fame, they're probably going to have like a great time on this boss. It's like still going to be a good DPS check even as the uh, season goes on. And yeah, big fan. I think this fight is close to perfect. I don't know. It, it's it's hard to have any criticisms for it. Besides, I just want more. I, w I want more Rash Ox. And yeah uh to me i think it's i think it's a an s yeah 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 for a pure single target fight i'd put this as an s for sure yeah because it's i mean like they've they made patchwork back in the day right and now they've kind of developed these fights like rigalon and sludge fist and rashok where it's like mm -hmm. you have this tight dps check that you're always going to kill the boss against this nasty enrage but also you have these brutally difficult mechanics that are going on too you know, you're dodging these lava waves, especially at the end of the fight, right? And you've got these stacks mm -hmm. on you. It's so good. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I love, love this that. fight. From Rashok, we move on to Zaskarn. Krista, would you like to take the first swing at, at Zaskarn? Oh, yes, I would. Started out doing the cheese. Didn't do it in time because we had like half a raid night. And uh, oh, you no. know, the, the classic weak oh, auras, no. people not figuring those out correctly. Then had to prog it normal, missed the good extend timing. I got put on bomb and trap duty. Never want to experience that again. <laughs> yeah, I also think that, so of my guilds, like 20 people that played this fight, I think close to 20 have expressed hatred of it. Yeah, that's probably fair to say. I mean, it just, again, it was just a boss that had so much potential, right? Yeah, and, and I think that's the thing. Like, if you if you look at the world first, prog and kill of it, it looks, it actually looks pretty fun. I think that was before, like, the cheese strat was really discovered and yeah. uh, further done, and uh, that was more reactive. I, I don't know, James, what was, what was your experience with Ziskarn like? Yeah, I actually had a good time playing the boss. I thought you had to be, like, really aware, knowing where you're going to get knocked, knowing where all the beams were, where the bombs were. Um but seeing how guilds killed it after us, I could definitely see how they would not think it's a great boss. And even actually after the race, but before the changes, like as we got more gear and the fight was easier to kill, I still enjoyed it a bit. But now that there's the change where the tactical destruction is baited on players instead yeah, of where the that? boss is... Yeah, I am not a fan of this fight anymore, like, at all. I think it's yeah, significantly that, worse. That is actually very cringe. Do you think that's, like, the main complaint, by the way? Or, because I was thinking, like, RNG traps, I think, kind of bothered me a bit. There's Yeah, well, there's also way more traps now, too. Like, I think it's definitely hard for guilds that got used to doing the boss a certain way to now have to bait the tactical destruction a different way. 
that I was ridiculous. Yeah. Like, yeah. why was that change made? That I, I yeah. The like, change it, it to remove the, the safe spots, of course. Okay, but, yeah. Yeah. Changing how the like bait is done and basically just re re overhauling that part of the fight that wasn't broken. That was pretty bad. I don't know. To me, this was a fight that it released and was cool to watch the world first progression on it because people didn't go for the the turbo cheese. But then it turns out actually the version that released of this fight was bad, and then the rework was also bad. I feel yeah. I'm feeling a D, but I'm open to uh, to arguments for higher. I think it only gets a D just because of like just how, like you said, just how it ended up playing out at the end and then just how they ended up reworking it because of like how people were choosing that end strat. And like if they just were able to just realize that sooner and then just have like a better number check, I think it would have been insanely fun. But yeah, I'd probably give it a D. Going once, going twice, sold to D. We will move on to Magmarax. This was... uh one of the bosses that changed the most from ptr testing to live on ptr you'd get the room just all filling up with fire extra fire spawns you couldn't full soak the puddles for uh one of the ptr tests as well you could only make them smaller but not make them go away and then the version that released on live you actually had a lot a great deal of control over the fire right you could full soak every set and spawn them in very predictable locations uh, which led to it ending up being a dramatically lower pull count boss than the ones before or after it for most guilds. James, do you have a, a take on uh, Magmarax? I hated this boss. And I actually think it's the first time I've fought a boss that was so boring, it almost lulled me to sleep. Like, I stopped taking mythic rating seriously because i literally thought i was just hitting a, a target dummy that looked like a weird dragon hydra like it was yeah it was really bad like i think i think in an ideal world this and rashok would have switched places in the raid and then it, you know it's like an all right fifth boss i guess i mean it's still pretty bad but it just feels like there's so much missing from the fight like for two or three minutes of the fight you're, you're literally just standing still doing nothing and it's mm -hmm. like a mythic boss like uh not, not my favorite boss. Yeah, I'm not sure if they should have like had more soaks or just like just more mechanics in general. But yeah, I mean, I feel like it was definitely lackluster. And I I like the concept of like you know the way the boss worked and just like how it was like a dog and like like a fire dog and just the way the mechanics were coming out. But yeah, I mean, I just wasn't fast enough. I feel like, and especially from going from Rashok to this, I mean, that's just a huge letdown. And like, I feel like it just gets a lower rank because it's deeper in the uh, raid because of that. It might have been cool if every time you soak, maybe they added one additional soak. So by the end of the fight, yeah, like you had to perfectly soak like twelve molten spittles or something on the ground, and then yeah, or like if you're like debuff fell off faster, you need to soak more like out yeah. in like Africa. Like yeah, I feel like there's just it could have just been like more hectic. Yeah, I'll, I'll come in with a hot take on this one, but I actually loved the fight. But I think this is a healer brain thing. The only reason I wouldn't put it S is because it was way too easy and the adjustment could be either just making it harder or adding some of like extra mechanics like you were suggesting. So it's like I genuinely would put it in an S, but it knocks it down at least two ranks for me because it was way too easy. Okay, but so fun because like people, everybody's bleeding out and there's always something oh, new. Exactly. Yeah, everyone's okay, yeah. dying. I could see it being fun on on the side of like playing the yeah, three frames. Yeah, healer fight. <laughs> yeah. For, from a tank perspective, it was also a case of oh, yeah, kind of not much going on. Although, you know, it actually, there were, there was some amount of surviving if, once you were at like 35 stacks or whatever, because the other tank didn't soak. And so you're just there getting a bunch of extra stacks and then trying to live. Uh, it was kind of fun. I don't know. I I feel like this is a good example for why, like, if people think we we just like Rashok because we like single target, you know, patchwork fights. I think Magmarax is a good example of like, no, there there does need to be more to it, right? Like, we need our mm -hmm. pull to be different from pull to pull, and Magmarax really, I don't think, accomplished that. So, I don't know. I feel like at least for DPS and tank players, this this is going to average out to being like a D. If we want to move it up to C based off of a good healer experience, I, I think I could allow that, though. I'll allow the C. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'd naturally rank B, so it averages out, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so a C, but with the caveat, better for healers and a lot worse yeah, for, uh, can, for tanks and DPS. You can pin like. this one on me. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, Echo of Neltharian, second to last boss. Onesie, uh, do you have a, what, what, what was the story of Echo of Neltharian for you? 
All I have to say is I was one through four on the week aura. I had oh, all no, I had no. four numbers, man. That is all I have to say. That boss was so annoying for me. I literally had a Google Doc on my second monitor. Like quite literally, before hearts would come out, I'd be looking at this Google Doc, like, okay, like four is here, one is here. And like I would just be looking at that for like the first couple polls and it's like not caring about DPS because I was legit all over the place. But yeah, I mean, honestly, as a warlock, I kind of enjoyed it. I feel like I had a lot of responsibility. And uh, especially with getting those four numbers. So I felt like I had a lot of control over the fight myself. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like it was a fine fight. Mm, I'm not sure if I'd rank it high as like a N, second to end boss. I have to think on that. But I don't know. I kind of enjoyed it. Yeah, I think the, the volcanic heart is the, like the problem with this fight, right? The Yeah, I mean, that was my biggest headache by far of the fight. And it wasn't even close. They bust out this private aura attack and they end up making just this the mechanic that has become the most systematized and most annoyingly systematized mechanic of yeah. the tier of the expansion actually has been solving uh solving volcanic heart so i think it just does go to show that you can't just you can't just make it a private aura you have to actually design a mechanic where it's feasible for players to yolo it otherwise we are going to solve it with some sort of system and if you hide it from our weak auras we're going to put a map up on our screen instead and it's going to be even worse yeah, they definitely didn't like achieve what they were going for because they're just they're trying to avoid having to make like weak or a reliant mechanics. But it's like if you're gonna do that, you really gotta make sure it's careful because this really feels like oh, I'm forgetting that boss. It's the one I use as an example in HFC. It's across the hall from Zul Harak, but I think it was like Warlord Zakun or something. It's just you got four seconds to get somewhere, and if you aren't in the exact right spot, you it's a wipe. You know, maybe adjust that or something. <laughs> Yeah, volcanic heart like radius timer or something. So I mean, because the, the idea, I, like, I feel like they wanted us to break wall more walls and go in more places, but mm -hmm. then they just deny the whole room space in P one by the end of it, so you can't do that. And then at the start of P two, they don't give you any wall breaks before the first heart, so it's just not possible to even do it as envisioned. I don't think. I don't know. I mean, I think the rest of the fight was cool. The wall breaking, the the room structure, that kind of stuff. The movement. I agree. I think I saw the volcanic hearts. It was a good design. Yeah. So the question is, I guess, how many how many ranks are we docking this thing for Volcanic Heart Sins? I'm thinking either C or B. Okay. I just aesthetically, we have an empty B tier right now, so I'm leaning towards B so that it looks nice and we have something in every. You tier. know what? That was honestly in my rankings. I was thinking of that too. I was like, you know what? B's empty. Maybe throw in a bone. All right, yeah. Oh, B for bone. I like that. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Like, I feel like the design was there. It just wasn't quite there. So I, I genuinely would put it at B. Yeah. Same. All right, and then we move on to Scale Commander Sarkareth. James, uh, your first, your first end boss world first as well. So, uh, do you want to perhaps sing some praises or or some criticisms of uh, of this fight? Uh, yeah, I thought it was a great fight. It was really fun. Phase one is like super interactive. It is a lot of, you know, you're taking a lot of damage, but also the damage that you're dealing matters. It's not just like a phase three only type of fight. So, everything matters from the get go. Like that. Phase two has like, I think phase two is the only part of the fight for me that's a little bit lacking. Maybe it just feels a little short, but I do like that there's some ads there, like ad control matters. So it's kind of like testing that skill set a little bit. Then phase three, I thought was like a banger. I thought phase three was so good. It's like action the whole time. It's really precise, like mechanical. If you get too many stacks, then you're going to die or you're going to kill the raid from going downstairs. And it's a... Uh, yeah, I, I really, really like the fight. Probably my favorite end boss I've done so far, because I've done uh, the Jailer and Razageth, and I definitely like this one more than the other two. I would give it an S. Okay. But I don't know if I would put it on like the best bosses of all time list, just because of the Phase 2 was a little bit missing. But phase 1 and Phase 3 were like insane. So for, for this raid, and just in general, I'd give it an S. Yeah, I like that I just kept pumping out mechanics the whole time. I think um after like enough polls, P1 and P2 started to feel like more like of a like heroic to me. So it was definitely like easy to get caught up and just feel comfortable in the fight, which definitely felt nice. And then like James said, P3 was very hectic. I just felt like there's always stuff going on. It was just always crazy stuff happening. I really liked it how you had to be precise and definitely a good fight. I enjoyed it too. Yeah, I think I think the design is actually really good. And I like how a lot of the mechanics work together. And by that, I mean, like different mechanics, give you different amount of stacks for going down. And, you know, like James pointed out, if you have too many, you go down, it kills people like there's a little bit of room to get hit by extra. I like when there is a combination of both things that will just wipe the raid and one where it's like, 
please don't do this. We can recover, but be careful. And I also have a preference towards uh, shorter ones as well. I struggle though because I feel like nothing still has been nearly as good as like Gul'dan Nighthold or um, what's the guy? The Blackrock Foundry final boss. Blackhand, yeah. Because those were so good. So I'm, I'm for me, it's like in between the S or the A. I'm not really sure. I agree. Length of fight, I actually think was really a really nice characteristic of this boss was that it was quite yeah. short. And it also, I like it when they do these end bosses where it is just phase one, phase two, phase three, timer based rather than percent health based. Because whenever the end boss is percent health based pushes, you get these fights like Razageth or Sire or Sylvanas where you're just stopping DPS at the end of P1 because you're True. waiting to make the same push every time. And yeah, uh, where it's instead timer based, I think like Sarkarath, like Jailer, that actually works out really well for, uh, for progression and also for farm. It makes farm a lot less cringe because you're not like stopping damage at different amounts each time now i don't know i do think p2 is a little bit lackluster i also think as you know there, there are a few parts about it that a few of the mechanics felt a little bit annoying but the tank precision on this fight is really high that's really fun um there's a lot of really really precise sequences of globals that you basically have to hit exactly perfectly or else it's going to be a wipe boss does some weird aggro yeah. stuff which is really annoying but you know whatever I don't know. I'm also fine with A or S. So I like A tier. Okay. Uh, James liked S. Krista, do you want to break the tie between S and A? Mm, how about you break the tie? All right. Well, because I'm in the middle. I'll I'll put it. We'll put it in S. I think. Uh, I think JPC's uh, take is good. The fight isn't perfect, but it's pretty. It's pretty darn good. If they keep making end bosses like this, I think we're gonna be pretty happy. Um, yeah. Agreed. So if you try to evenly distribute the bosses properly, yes, would make sense if you're going for that. Yeah, yep, that's uh, that's all part of the plan. Well, there's our list of the uh, the raid bosses this tier. Let us know in the comments which ones you agree and disagree with, and which of us has the the best and worst takes. Thanks everybody for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Peace.